One very important decision on the selection of soil strength for design is whether the soil is behaving under drained or undrained loading conditions. Why? Because each give different strength values and the selection of the wrong strength could lead to disaster. Any soil can experience either condition depending on the rate of loading and the permeability of the soil. In general, we normally treat coarse grain soils such as sands and gravels as drained materials because their permeability is high and therefore water can flow freely through the large and continuous void spaces. Fine grain soils such as silts and clays, however, have much smaller void spaces and often these are not continuous so there is no direct route for water to flow freely. You can consider water flow in fine grain soils is a little like a game of snakes and ladders, where the water advances to a certain point but then has to backtrack as the void spaces come to an abrupt end. Thus, the porous nature of soil has a direct influence on soil strength. We can illustrate this by again calling on more circle for two-dimensional stress, as many practical problems can be treated by analysis in two dimensions. Imagine we have a submerged coarse grain material. This means the soil void space is saturated and that we are going to construct a raft foundation at ground level. Consider a representative element within the bulb of soil influenced by the raft's loading. Before the raft is constructed, the soil element will experience the following vertical and horizontal normal stresses. The Mohr circle for these stresses looks like so. Note that the circle is well away from the failure line and this is known as the K0 or at rest condition. If the raft is now constructed, we see that the Mohr circle shifts to the right and increases in diameter. This is because the raft loading increases both the horizontal and vertical normal stresses. These increases take place in unison as the load is transferred directly into greater intergranular stresses. Any tendency for the pore water pressure to increase does not materialize as the permeability of the soil permits the water to flow rapidly out of the void space. So the grains settle into a denser and stronger configuration and this is therefore referred to as the drained or effective stress condition. The effect of vertical stress on the soil element changes from the at rest condition to the following. Note again that the Mohr circle at the end of construction remains well away from the line defining failure. Its distance away being a measure of the foundation's factor of safety. Now let's take the exact same scenario but this time for a fine grained soil. The K0 or in situ stresses remain essentially the same as before. This time however, as the foundation load is applied, the Mohr circle will again shift to the right but its diameter remains constant. This occurs because water is incompressible and it takes the additional load from the raft as the low permeability soil prevents the water in the void space from escaping quickly enough. Hence, the soil grains are prevented from reconfiguring into a denser, stronger structure. The consequence of such behaviour can be seen if we test three specimens that are fully saturated, have the same moisture content and a similar soil structure. Then the application of an increasing confining pressure in each test will simply mean that the pore water pressure in each specimen is increased by the same amount. No change in effective stress occurs as the pore water carries the additional load and the shear strength measured, Cu, will be the same irrespective of the confining pressure. This gives a phi u equal to zero degrees failure line. Also note that the characteristics of all three specimens in terms of effective stress is represented by the same circle. This is a consequence of the pore water pressure at failure being subtracted from the initial confining stress for each test. This is an important concept to understand. 
It's not that the soil has changed in any way, but rather the loading conditions are such that in the short term the soil is not free draining and hence its strength is limited by its initial effective stress. In the long term of course, the elevated pore water pressures will dissipate and the stress once carried by the pore water will be transferred into the soil skeleton. The lesson here is, under undrained loading, saturated fine grained soils will have a strength limited by their effective stress prior to loading. But in time, assuming the soil has not failed under the loading, its strength will increase with transfer of load from the pore water to the soil grains. In temperate climates throughout the world, soils are essentially saturated at foundation level. So, engineers practicing in such regions would do well to remember this Jekyll and Hyde behavior of fine-grained soils. Finally, we mentioned earlier that as soil is loaded, the strength increases as its grains move into a denser, tighter configuration. The price we pay for this closing of void space is settlement or the movement of foundations. And this leads us nicely to our next series of videos.